ready to talk it up? Are you ready for the big chit chat? We're gonna be shooting the wood in the shell. Welcome to Shooting the Shit with Cheryl. We have got such a great show tonight. You are not even going to, or today, I guess. You're not even going to believe it. <laughs> um, we have the power couple of Brad Paisley and Kimberly Williams Paisley and um, improv extraordinaire Brian Palermo. And now to get things started, Kira, we, um, in honor of Brad, we wanted to really kick things off. Don't act like you've never opened a beer before. With a um, bang. So grab a cold one. And um, I was going to say strap in, but that sounds weird. Oh my God, there goes my husband. Uh, okay, let's just cut the shit. Um, my first guest. Brad Paisley is a country music singer and songwriter. Uh, he sold over 11 million albums. He's won three Grammys, 14 Country Music Association Awards. He's a member of the Grand Old Opry and is an all round good guy. Uh, there's also Kimberly Williams Paisley who happens to be married to Brad. I mean, this is the cutest couple ever as you can imagine. Um, she's an actress. Best known for her roles on According to Jim, Nashville, and Father of the Bride, and Father of the Bride 2. She made her Broadway debut in the Tony Award-winning fil uh, film, play, The Last Night of Value. And she's also, this is so impressive, um, a best-selling New York Times author of uh, Where the Light Gets In. So please welcome Brad and Kim. Do we have them? Where where are you guys? I can't see them. All right, how can about now? now? Oh, oh, I can see you now. Hi guys. Hi. Oh my god. How's it going? You guys are so dang cute. Thank well, you for thank doing you. the show. Thanks for drinking Bud Light. So it early is early in the morning. It's so strange to talk to you to uh, when you're only on your first drink. Usually by the time. <laughs> But usually when we Zoom, you're on your fourth. So this will be Brad, a new experience. We should keep some secret secrets. Oh. Um, you guys are fascinating for so many reasons. Like the, the, you seem so, I like that, that I say you seem, you seem so grounded. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you act so grounded. You act so grounded, um, but you, You've done extraordinary things and you keep doing extraordinary, extraordinary things. Um, so Brad, you're from West Virginia. Yes, right? ma'am, I am. That's a right. small town in West Virginia. Very small, 1,200 people. Yeah, so that is smaller than my high school. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. So what was it like growing up there and were you dying to get out of a small town or did you, did you like growing up? In a small well, by the time by the time I was in high school, I was ready to get out, but I loved it. I mean, I loved the, you know, these were great people. So the thing about a small town that's really, uh, I guess, a, a blessing for somebody like me is that when you are a young kid that wants to be a singer and want to play shows, they will book you at everything because it's like, oh, he's saying, uh, have him at the Lions Club meeting this week. Uh, can he do the Rotary lunch? What about the uh, mother-daughter banquet at the church? We should sing at that too. I was so absolutely busy as you were that booked. Yeah. So how do you get from, how does one get from a small town in West Virginia to, you know, the Grand Old Opry? Uh, well, you know, I, I started out playing on like a, uh, a radio show in, in West Virginia um, called The Wheeling Jamboree, which a lot was a lot like the Opry, so. I learned a lot about playing live music at that. I was kind of like Kim in the sense that I, I knew when I was a kid, uh, I knew what I wanted to be. And just like you, you told your parents when you were what, 12? Five. Five. <laughs> See, I know everything about her. <laughs> um, so 
so was there a moment for you, Brad, I'm going to focus on Brad and then I'm going to pivot to Kim. Um, was there a moment for you when uh, you felt like, oh, I made it or, oh, wow, people know who I am or. It's today. <laughs> Being on shooting the shit with you. Yes. Yes. I made it. You're welcome. Absolutely. That. <laughs> that we're on this it's uh i don't know if there's there was ever a moment that that felt like that i mean i think i speak for any performer when i say that uh you always kind of feel like there's things you still want to do i think you know i i would hope i mean we're still sort of searching other than daniel day lewis who feels like he's done uh he could, anybody else he could walk away now he's done yeah he but he's he nailed it. it that's all nailed it, nailed it. none My of us gosh. have nailed it so we're still working i don't know i you know, the first time somebody walks up and tells you what some song you did means to them is a, is a big deal. Yeah, that's, yeah. For me, it was when I went to the um, Beverly Hills Hotel <laughs> and the valet guy refused to give me a ticket because he said, no, I know who you are. Oh, that's great. I said, but I'd still like uh, the ticket. <laughs> and he goes, no, you don't need a ticket. I said, I, I don't think that the next person out here is gonna know who I am when I come back to get my car. Anyway, it was very stressful. When I did, when I did um, Father the Bride right after, um, I got on an airplane and I heard somebody in front of me talking and they were whispering like, is that the girl from Father the Bride, is that? And they were debating back and forth and they wait, the way they finally settled is, nah, she'd never be sitting in coach. <laughs> sitting in coach. <laughs> no, I get, I get it. Um, and then, Brad, is there, um, well, I have to ask you about Dolly Parton because I okay. think people are- Well, so Kim may know as much about Dolly as I do. Oh, right. Kim, how do you know so much about Dolly? Um, I did a show with her called uh, Heartstrings. It's on Netflix, streaming. Oh. Yeah, well, so we shot that last year. But Brad's done, you've done a lot of stuff with Dolly too. Yeah, Dolly's unbelievable. Yeah, and is she who we think she is? Like, is she, she seems, yeah. she also seems down to earth, but very, you know, clearly accomplished and, and talented. But yeah, she's a, she's a strange mix of absolutely down to earth, 100% and he's all of a sudden very interested, 100% uh, authentic and also, you know, wig, total makeup, absolute, you know, sort of what, what you would almost consider like a, uh, you know, this look, this image, she's all about that at the same time as being authentic. And she has melded into this 100% authentic character that she'll tell you, like one of her favorite things to say is it takes, it costs a lot to look this cheap. Yeah. You know, she loves little jokes like that, but she really, yeah. she just embraces everything from anything like plastic surgery or uh, the outfits she chooses and the sort of over the top sort of image uh she's so inspiring that way that's that's who she is and that's what she wants that's you know it seems like she puts out there what she wants people to see and to know about her so kim when you work with her were you saying that she shows up on set like a hundred percent done she does yeah she shows up completely a hundred percent done and we had like our my first day of filming with dolly i had a scene with her right off the bat and we had this storm and the and the wind was just like horizontal and the rain was horizontal and everything was flying all over the set and dolly appeared on set and she was the only one that didn't move it was like she had a bubble around her and her hair didn't move and she was just so pristine and it was like how does she do that she's just dolly she has got this amazing protective bubble around her yeah or she's so done that nothing would move it out of place i guess how do you keep your hair from getting wet well, when, like she'll say, when you, when you pack it and unpack it out of a box, it's, uh, it's easy. <laughs> it's like a... <laughs> because it's synthetic, it just rolls off. Yeah. Um, and Brad, is there, what's the weirdest place you've performed? Is there, a, do you have oh. a story of like a, you name it? Yeah. Shower? I, yeah. Well, no, it's like, it's really, I mean, over the years, just some bad thing. I think maybe the worst thing I ever did was like a, was one of my early pub publicists sort of booked me on like one of the QVC or home shopping networks to go on for like, <laughs> like when I had a single out and they're like, 
<laughs> you will sell some records on here. And I had to go on and like sing for like 20 minutes. And the host, it was just like, I just, I got so bummed out when it was over. I said, if this is what it takes, I'm quitting. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just be a, a, a for hire, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's pretty oh, no, Somebody writes QVC rocks. It does rock. I don't want to perform on there, but it's it's a it's a great <laughs> you place. Wanna, you can buy your slippers from there. That's fine. Yeah, no, absolutely. And but now it's now. I mean, we're we're all. I mean, just this week we're doing strange things. I, I've done. I did. You know, I did the two weeks ago. Did the Today Show from the living room like this without changing my pants and <laughs> you know I was wearing like a button down shirt and whatever pajama sweatpants I wore so. It's a new they world. It's a new That's world. That's perfectly acceptable. Actually, it would be weird if you were dressed up. Oh, wait. So people, okay, I'm going to ask a few questions that we have, and then I'm going to, like I said, pivot. Um, pivot. What part, oh, what town in West Virginia? Glendale. Glendale. Mm -hmm. Two Glendale. Words. Two, Two words. words. Um, and then, uh, oh, somebody has a Dolly Parton t-shirt on. That's exciting. Perfect. <laughs> no? Great. Um, I didn't and realize we were coming on here to promote Dolly. I she know. totally needs, <laughs> Dolly needs so much promotion. We really <laughs> Any other that. country legends we can <laughs> we should promote today? Yeah. Uh, Johnny Cash, then, let's talk about Johnny Cash. Oh, I do like Johnny Cash. Um, mm. And then, oh, how did we all meet? Well, I met Brad and Kimberly through uh, Susan Yeagley and Kevin Nealon. Because we all mm -hmm. had a Who's game that? night together. Who's that? <laughs> I've been stalking them for two years. Uh, okay. I love them. We yeah. are huge fans of yours, Cheryl, by the way. Yeah, so I, I, we should talk about you for just a second. Because I, I think your comedic timing and your improv skills and <laughs> your uh, ability to work inebriated is <laughs> just... <laughs> extraordinary? It's, it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But no, we really are big fans. We, you know, I, I can't... Yeah, it was really really fun first time we met and I think we we all became old friends quickly uh and and now we have most people don't realize but we have kind of a zoom group and we do some fun stuff during this quarantine to sort of stay sane even though we're in Tennessee and you guys are out there in California and yeah um, it's, it is interesting I mean that's one of the, the you know I hate to say one of the good things that have come out of this but it is true I used to only see you guys maybe once every six months or so because right. we live in Tennessee. So now I get to see you all the time. And we mm -hmm. all, well, I, I drink with you. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, but I'm consistent. Um, Kimberly, will you, or both of you guys, can you just talk about the store for a second? Yeah, yeah you should, you should, you do a better job than me. Well, that's not true, but uh, the store is a nonprofit that we just started. It began in the middle of March. It's a, uh, it was designed to be a referral-based free grocery store in Nashville. Um, and the idea behind it was that people could come in. It was based on a model that we saw in uh, Santa Barbara called Unity Shop. People could come in and make choices for their family like a regular grocery store. So people who are suffering from food insecurity or, um, you know, in, a, in sort of a tough situation tem temporarily could come in and feel normal for a little bit. Um, and the idea was that people were getting handouts at um, shelters and, and those things are necessary sometimes, but it's also necessary for people to feel empowered and in a position of um, choice and to have dignity. And, and so that was the way we wanted the store to be designed. Of course, then we had the tornado in Nashville and then the pandemic. So unfortunately right now, people can't come into the store and shop, but we are delivering. We're delivering specifically to seniors all around Nashville and we're doing curbside pickup. And um, so we've been open since mid-March and we've already supplied over 15,000 meals to people in need. And uh, we're serving about five times more people than we ever anticipated we would. So we've had to uh, pivot quite a lot and adapt to a growing challenge, but it's been really wonderful for us. I mean, it's, that's really um, amazing. And I, I, I'm sure people appreciate it uh, in ways that they can't even express to you because like you're saying, giving people the dignity of going in and picking out what they want is, you know, extraordinary. How do you guys, how does it, um, how do you keep the doors open? How do you have the funding for it? 
Well, we, we started this project about three years ago and put together a really smart board of directors of sort of successful business people in Nashville that I knew would have the kind of uh, influence to, to make this happen. And we had to build it from the ground up. We literally built this thing brick by brick. You know, the, the structure was completed in January. We got our permits at the end of February. And so here we go with, we're thinking we're going to soft roll out and and do this thing where uh, and we kind of assembled funding over the course of three years and then um, well, through donations and whatever and fundraisers and such and as we soft roll out the next thing you know the tornado hits and then this pandemic and so I think our model was kind of ambitiously thinking we would do about 3,000 meals in our first month or so um, in our first little you know quarter of operating and we've done 15,000. <laughs> and, you know, and it's been, it's, it's sort of all hell broke loose at the moment that we opened our doors and it feels like there's some meant to be in our timing and it's such, it, it's such a strange time to say, okay, we are, we have a grocery store with dignity where little kids can come in with their parents and they, they know the reason it's called the store. They have no idea from the experience that it's not a normal grocery store they just don't pay for anything at the end. They even check out and one of our kids' favorite things to do when they volunteer is, is to run the barcode machine because mm -hmm. it's fun to check people out and um, which came out wrong. Um, <laughs> you can but, check people out and check people out. Right, yes. right, right. But it's <laughs> like, you, you, you know, it's like anyway, uh, it's a dignified experience, but we have had to shift from that for now. And we'll get back to what our model is eventually when people are allowed in buildings again. Right, you know? we'll get back to normal. Is there a way people can donate to this, to the store? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we are accepting donations of uh, over a million dollars to- uh, <laughs> so, uh, You can go to the store.org and um, you can learn more about it and donate. That'd be great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so Kim, uh, I, I guess let's start with where the light gets in. So you wrote, um, a book that I've been reading and it's so good. Your writing is so good because you managed to, um, keep the humor of who you are in your writing, even though you're talking about something very serious, um, and probably something that a lot of people, have experience with. So can you just tell us for a moment about your um, New York Times best-selling book? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reading it too, by the way. Um, but yeah, this was, this is a story about my mom um, who passed away from Alzheimer's disease about three years ago now. And um, I wrote the memoir because um, that when we were going through it, there was a lot of, um, a lot of isolation. So yeah, <laughs> he's heard this story before. Um, yeah, there was a lot of isolation when we were going through it. We felt really alone. Those are our blinds. We're lowering the blinds. Just so you don't look so ghostly. Thank you. Aww, he's not that's about you sweet. Know. He's concerned about your lighting. No, he's so sweet. Oh, nice. Um. Anyway, so we, uh, you know, we didn't feel like we had a lot of resources and. Um, and there was not a lot of conversations happening about Alzheimer's at the time. So uh, it was really healing for me to write the book. And um, I've since connected with so many people in the Alzheimer's Association and then other people who've dealt with it. And especially right now, I'm thinking about caregivers who are at home with people dealing or living with dementia. And, um, and I feel for them because the job is hard already. Um, and now people are having to stay at home and be isolated and not have caregivers come in and um, it's a big job. So um, that's another community that I'm a part of and I'm, and I'm, we do a fundraiser that's really fun in Nashville, a dance um, where people dress up. It's an 80s themed dance party and people come oh. and we've got country music artists and, and other crazy. artists come. Um, we're gonna dance. see some of that in a moment. Because oh, you really? guys have made some splashes. Yes. On Instagram. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, I, I can personally say everybody should read Where the Light Gets In because it's, it's really extraordinary. And, and congratulations to you because that's quite an accomplishment. Um, Thank you. So I love... <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, okay. Um, Wine. 
They, <laughs> and Kimberly has done a Hallmark um, Christmas movie. Because, by the way, right now, that is like every actor's dream. Because, the Hallmark, yes, because the Hallmark Christmas movies have become, I don't know, oddly iconic. And um, there's just something really fun. And I don't know, everybody wants to do one. Did you know well, that? Are you gonna do? Are you gonna do one? You would nobody be does. great. I would love to do one. Is my phone ringing? No. Well, nobody's phone is ringing right now. Yeah, they they could sign you up, and we don't know when it'd be. But I mean, we gotta we gotta talk to our friends over there. And see, I mean, yeah, I bet they I bet they'd love the the story of small because I can tell you what'll happen. Tell small town happen. Cheryl decides to come home for Christmas. <laughs> Young, or you know, basically, there's this this <laughs> widower who. He's just not ready to move on. <laughs> but yeah, then he meets the love of his life and he's not sure. And at the very end, you decide that they, you're going to spend every Christmas together. together. Yeah, I think that might happen. Because my, my mom and my stepfather watch, they, I mean, they watch movie after movie, especially, I, I don't know, starting in October till January. And he says that, and when I go home, I watch them all with them. And, and right before the couple's about to kiss, He'll pause it and go, they're not going to kiss. This is what they do every time they get close and somebody's going to walk in and ruin the kiss. <laughs> and he's always right, isn't he? I think, they get, I think they get one kiss per episode. They do have rules. They have rules because they want it to be a certain thing. And what's funny is I get addicted at Christmas time. I leave it on. That's he just, does. I leave it on because I'm addicted to like see like what they're doing. And it just does feel like that part of the year. It just it feels does. like... It does. I, it's you. You do leave it on, and you know that when you watch it, it's gonna be. There's gonna be a sweetness to it, and right. And the production is so nice, and it's very Christmassy. <laughs> it gets you in yeah. the mood. Did you like? Are you doing another one? Did I read that? Did well, you know? um, I produce a series on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel um, that we do. We've done like one a year, basically, for the last three or four years. We did two in one year. So we were about to, actually, we were supposed to be shooting now. We were supposed to be yeah, shooting. Yeah, this week on our time. calendar, it still says, it still uh, says Van I'm, Vancouver. Apparently, I'm in Vancouver shooting Darrow and Darrow, but uh, that didn't happen. So, yeah, I mean, as soon as we can go back to work, I hope we can do that again because that's super fun. It, do you know Wendy Malik? She plays um, yeah. She plays my mom. She's hilarious. She's so and great, right? So great. And uh, Tom Cavanaugh, who's on The Flash. So and cute and done, great. Yeah, so we have a great time. Um, what, Kim, what do you get recognized for the most? If you're just in the grocery store, people come up to you and say, hey. Um, probably Father the Bride is the one that it's, that's the most recognizable. It depends where I am, you know? Sometimes the grocery store might be according to Jim. In Italy, it's according to Jim, I'll tell you. Yeah. Did the Italians yeah, love a, according yeah, to Jim? Yeah, we didn't pay for as many meals in Italy. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> That's oh, so according, weird. oh, Jim, is he, oh, Joe, Joe, I got that, you, you don't want to pay, you don't want to pay, Jim's yeah. a funny man. Also, I love um, 10th Kingdom, there's this miniseries I did on NBC, like, years and years ago, it was like a 10-hour miniseries, and there's this cult following of that show, so it's, sometimes it's like, you know, young kids who My are, favorite recognition for you, though, is the speeding tickets in Franklin, Tennessee, <laughs> where the, the cop walks up to the car and says license registration ma'am you know how fast you're going and you're like i'm sorry i'm sorry you know and she, he takes the thing he's like paisley see and you're, you remember that one mm -hmm. see and you're like yeah and he's like slow down mrs paisley and he leaves gets her out of a ticket so that's when oh. i feel important <laughs> you like it when she gets recognized because of you well i like it when she gets out of speeding tickets because oh of that's me. true that is nice that's and when nice. we get free meals in Italy, that's not bad. That's, yeah, that's pretty great. Um, okay, you guys, we're going to do um, a little game we call Behind the Gram. So you both have very um, fun Instagrams. Uh, and so I've gone through them, and we, we found some, a few pictures I'd like to just discuss with you. Okay. <laughs> Sam is going to show us our first picture here. Okay. Mm-hmm. How's your Bud Light? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's cute. That's me and Jeff Gordon. That is, I mean. Isn't that funny? It's crazy because uh, when I saw it, I thought, oh, 
I didn't know Brad had a brother. Right. Then, because then I had to look it up because it, it looks like you guys are identical twins. <laughs> We, he, the funniest thing was when, my, when Jeff met my dad, Doug, uh, we were at an event and Jeff walked up and he went, Dad! <laughs> and he was like, I was, he was like, because Jeff's from California. And he was like, where were you in 1971? <laughs> you know, were you in California? And he's like, no, I swear I wasn't. <laughs> that is so crazy. I mean, so this was clearly, you guys didn't just show up wearing the same thing. By no, like the other, the other side of this photo, which you've graciously cut out is Carrie Underwood, <laughs> who's standing there with Jeff. And that's the CMA Awards. And it's basically what we had this idea for him to be standing there when they came back from commercial break and not say anything and just stand next to her for a few minutes while she like <laughs> says, and our next performer is, and I come walking out behind them like, what's going on? <laughs> Like I was late changing and no, but what's funny was in the, like in the arena from a distance, no one knew I wasn't standing there till I walked out. No, I know. It is like, it's, it's like your eyes are playing tricks on you. Okay. Yeah. So what's our next one? Oh, oh. Kimberly, I believe this is from you. That looks like Jay. That looks like your brother. It does. Tell us what's yeah, happening. I used to wear I used to wear sweatshirts that said Yale because my dad went to Yale. Now I just wear T-shirts that say Kale. <laughs> and now you used to. I think that's before you had your eyes fixed too. <laughs> I think, I and the eye job. The eye job really improved. Her. I'm glad you did Father the Bride after the eye job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really had to take a look at this because I know you did wear glasses when you were young, right? <laughs> but those aren't your real eyeballs. <laughs> They're not my real eyeballs. Thank you for noticing that. I mean, I honestly thought they were until Gabby. <laughs> my that looks a little like Jasper. That looks a little like our youngest. Yeah. Oh, cute. Okay, let's see our next one. Oh. Mm, yeah. That's after the eye job, but before <laughs> the 90s. <laughs> why? Why is my only question. Why not, Cheryl? <laughs> it's that 80s party she's talking about. Yeah, that was for the uh, the eighties dance party for Alzheimer's. That's nice. Is that is that why you always wear a hat, Brad? Because that's what your real hair yeah. is. It's just it out is. of control. It's just I can't tame it. <laughs> okay, what's our next one, Sam? Mm. Ah, yes. That's our that's your dad and your Call mom the bride. and your and our wedding planner. <laughs> right. So there. I mean, you got to work with amazing people, didn't you, Kim? I did. They're just all amazing. Yeah, I, I haven't, we've seen Steve Martin a little bit in Santa Barbara, and then I saw Diane last year, a couple years ago at a party, but yeah, we haven't really, like, had a Father of the Bride reunion. I think that would be fun. Let's do that on shooting the Shit, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Marty mm -hmm. and Steve, let's see, I've met, I haven't met, um, Diane. Yeah, I haven't met Diane before, but, uh, okay, so let's see, let's see the one final one. Sam. Also oh, 80s, 80s party. Please dig up more of those 80s parties. <laughs> They're just so flattering. I mean, I, I you guys look like you're 13. I mean, oh. I think we can rock, we rock the 80s. Well, I look well. 13 if 13 year old had uncontrollable hair growth. <laughs> so wait, is that a hair band and then your hair is sticking up out of it? Me? Yeah. Yeah, that's like a headband. Oh, because see, I thought it was a uh, hat. It was but just no. my strange hairline, my strange. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I have a Greek hairline. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's an interesting look. Oh, I like your thriller jacket. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly, you, I mean, you always look cute no matter what you're wearing. I mean, that's a it cute. Was, it was vintage. That is been, we added like the pink crinoline thing underneath. You look like you've got, it. you're still, you've got your cast on still. I do look like, it's like arm. a cast. It's yeah. like somebody should be signing that. Yeah. Saying, <laughs> get well soon. Okay, guys. Well, listen, I, what I would like for you to do, I would like for you to stick around because I want to play a game with you guys. Uh, it involves country songs. I okay. Want to see if you have a good knowledge of country songs or not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. I might win this one. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so stand by. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna talk to um, an amazing person. Everybody's amazing, but uh, I think you'll you'll find him very interesting. You might know him. I don't know. Um, so, moving on to our next guest for a moment. Um, 
Uh, so some people know that I was part of the Groundlings Theater here in LA where we do improv and sketch comedy. And I got to work with Brian Palermo, who is really one of the best improvisational actors I know. He's smart, he's funny. Um, and I would like to bring him out now. Brian? Here I am. Hi, Chris. I don't know uh, if it's switching uh, video-wise, but uh, hi. What's up, lady? Well, I, you know, so Brian and I are very good friends, but what I find fascinating is what you're doing besides, so you still teach at the Groundlings and you perform, but tell us what else you do with your improv skills. Yeah, so uh, real real briefly, I talked real fast. Hi, uh, uh, Brad and Kimberly, by the way, and everybody, all of your participants and people who are watching this uh, recorded later, whatever, hi, people. Uh, so Groundlings is improv and sketch comedy. Uh, as a, a function of the theater, we teach uh, corporate workshops as well. So using a lot of improv skills and training to help with interpersonal soft skills, communication, collaboration, generating creativity, all that kind of stuff. Uh, about 10 years ago, a buddy of mine asked me to create a workshop for specifically for science communicators. And I'm a big science nerd, so I got into that hardcore. So that's what I've been doing for about a decade. Uh, besides, I still act and I get my little guest spots here and there, and I still do my corporate stuff here and there, and I still perform and teach at the Groundlings. But the big thing I'm all over is uh, teaching science communicators to help them uh, be a little bit more better, uh, a little bit more better, because I'm a communicator. A little bit more better. So I know it's very interesting to me because I imagine scientists, and I'm um, generalizing, which is never good, but sometimes necessary. Uh, they're, they're, it's very philosophical. They're overall um, not great. Um, communicators, no, no, yeah, let me, let me take, okay, you, take that bullet you, for you. You call them names. Scientists are, are, are generally, again, logical thinkers, linear thinkers. They're, they're, they're more about processing data in their head and what's the most important thing. Oh, here's this fact. I'm going to share it. And now the world will change. And they don't recognize that the communication of the data is almost as, it's as important. I mean, because you can have great information, but if you can't convey it to other human beings, nothing happens there, right? So uh, they don't get communications training. They generally tend and trend to not be uh, extroverted or great presenters. So I love working with those men and women because it kind of loosens them up a little bit and hopefully it shares good information into the world. So it's a win-win-win. It's so when you go around the world, what's, what's one of the uh, most interesting places you've been to, to do. I taught and this is so weird because this is all improv based you know 30 years ago I was just doing bar prob in the world I'm from New Orleans so everything was just <laughs> drunks yelling stuff at you and there was you know uh I think you were in the audience one yeah uh, I like that that was me yeah 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 so 30 years later now improv is a thing it's a big thing and internationally like I was aware of Chicago New York and, and here LA uh but I didn't know it's such a big deal so last year I taught in Copenhagen for a week for their improv festival, and that's all comedy improv. Then uh, I went to Costa Rica and taught a corporate workshop for three days in Costa Rica, which is fantastic. And then I went to Spain, Puerto Rico, uh, Salt Lake City, Hawaii, New Orleans, all these places for Ocean Sciences, which is a group called ASLO, uh, Association for the Sciences of Limnology and Oceanography. All these, and there's nothing, they talk in jargon and acronyms like people understand it or care at all. And as soon as they drop that, they've lost their audience. So I come in and say, look, can, you know, keep them, connect with them, engage with them. Don't throw jargon that makes them all just tune you out immediately. So okay. I've got to go to cool places. So let's say you go to Spain uh, and, and you're talking to a group of people. What's the first thing that you, that you tell them? Is there a warm up that you do with people where it's like, okay, Here's one of the first ideas of connecting with people. I do, I do, I do. Um, I usually, because it's a science crowd, know your audience is a tenant of communication. So they're real comfortable with looking at, you know, slideshows and PowerPoints and, and, and stuff like that that could be really boring, but it's their world. So I give them like 10 minutes of a slideshow. It's like, this is the neurology behind science communication. This is what your brain does when you're actively uh, engaging with emotional stuff as opposed to just data stuff. So I set them all up with the real things and then I get into the improv exercises. And the beauty about that is it's not improv for comedy's sake. So people get really nervous that they need to be funny or uh, charming or, or entertaining or whatever. So you don't. I just want you to learn these mechanics of eye contact, body language, use a little bit of emotion because everybody relates to that. So it comes back down to being relatable. If you're a, 
a bio geo <laughs> they all have all these million prefixes put together so you're not just a geologist you're a bio geochem and you're the the most important bio geochem woman in the world but you're not great at speaking with or working with or others you know so i'll tell them always make it relatable the thing is uh nobody's a bio geochem if you meet a thousand people nobody's there maybe may, yeah maybe 10 or 12 people like me are like science geeks and really like that stuff but that's it however how many of those thousand people have emotions everybody oh, all, all, of them. All, all of them which goes back to country songs which goes back to hallmark hallmark uh, christmas specials it's all emotion and that's everybody in our species has that so that's a way to connect to people and once you've got people more connected and listening to you then you give them the message of all the data and all the graphs and all the carbon. how do you get scientists to uh you know uh tune in with their emotions uh, a lot of improv exercises that are very basic that you know, but just starting with, uh, let's do an emotional expression on your face, right? So I'm going to give you a cue. Uh, so let's all do this. Let's all do this together. Everybody. All right. Do okay, it right now. Do it right You're on the camera if you want to be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm going to say express joy. And I mean, go big with your face and your gestures and your voice and just express joy for five seconds. One, two, three, go. Oh, ah, <laughs> <laughs> Good, excellent, all right. Um, and then uh, I run them through several other, mad, glad, sad, scared, and horny, or your big five. Everybody in the history of our species has, has experienced that, whether you like it or don't like it or think it's appropriate in the moment or not, everybody has experienced that. So if you share some of that, everybody connects with you, it's like, oh, that's a human. It may be an old lady in a lab coat who's a biogeochemist, but it's a human, and I can connect to them. So I make them do a little, uh, emotional expression warm-ups and I've had the, the most fun with these guys because a lot of them don't express naturally they tend towards introversion and um, it's really fun to get them there I had a, a, a guy at JP I teach at JPL which is Jet Propulsion Laboratories I had a guy take out his phone and Google how to express joy so Aww. people just are so <laughs> what to do and so I just make them do it and then through that experience of this is all low stakes no stakes exercises but it lets them experience, okay, if I, if I use my face, I communicate better. If I use my body, I communicate. If I use my voice, uh, what I call holistic presentation. Um, Brian, we have a few questions from people, and Sal wants I've to- I've got a few answers, go. Is there a resting horny face? Yes, it's this. Oh, oh yeah, Our that's the usual. And the beauty of it is everybody's different. So my resting horny face may read as frustrated, constipated, excited, whatever. Everybody's different. But the point is, if you give some kind of expression on your face, it is more engaging to your audience than neutral, right? right. And scientists are trained to be neutral because uh, for 100 years, if you showed any emotion, you were seen as less rational and thus less credible and it worked against ah. you. Now, you've got to connect your audience or all your information is meaningless. So, you know, everybody's stuck together right now, right? Yeah. So we've been uh, in lockdown with each other for quite some time. Yes. Um, and probably people's communication skills are um, waning. <laughs> Might be. What, is there any way that we could be better communicators with, e with each other? I mean, it feels like right now, uh, I don't give a shit. I went, I, well, you know, that's sort of a default setting for you, Cheryl, and we went really talking is. about it. So drink more beer at 1130 in the morning and we'll find out how your shit giving goes. But I get, I get it. Um, we just just a ton of exercises. And again, a lot of people get hung up that they need to be funny because improv is funny. It's you and Lisa Kudrow and Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph. And people think of improv and, and Keegan, Michael Key and Jordan Peele. They think of funny. That's not that's not the point. Like, yeah, uh, you, you could uh, try to work up and be a professional at it, but really it's just the mechanics of these exercises are really beneficial for anybody. Same as playing an instrument or same as uh, working out or doing some sport. You know, you're not gonna be a pro at it, but it's still good for you. So for us in lockdown, three quick tenets of improv that translate really well for just personal communication. Listen with intent, uh, use your emotional intelligence, and a spirit of yes and and uh, i can go really fast with this but listening with intent so right now you're listening to me and you're smiling and nodding how did i share my screen somebody shared a screen yes they shared it for you go. oh somebody's doing that on your end okay. yes i've got people brian got magical tech gremlins Not just, just me and kira sitting here i've got people on the other end doing something extraordinary 
Yeah, well, I've got people in Peru who are watching on. All right, so uh, listen with intent. Everybody, like right now, you're looking at me and you're smiling and nodding, but you're thinking, hmm, how can I get to another beer? When do I, oh, I want to kick Bobby out of the house. I want to go hang out with Kimberly at the store. You know, people are just thinking other stuff. To be an effective communicator who's really connected with their, their partners, whether that's your kids, your family, your neighbors, whatever it is, you have to listen with the intent to understand them, not yeah. just not listen with just a, the the trigger to trigger your own response. Right. That's a big thing, and it comes from comedic improv because if you and I are doing a scene, I have no idea what you're going to say. I have to listen to you in order to work with you. Second thing is emotional intelligence. Not only use your ability to read someone else's face and you know read the room and how are people uh, feeling but also use your emotional intelligence to express yourself. And the last thing, that, that spirit of yes and. In the real world, there's a lot of no's. No's are gonna come at you really fast. In the corporate world, in the science world, you're gonna get a lot of no's. Um, but start your communication with anybody, at least with that spirit of yes. So no matter what you say, I'm gonna to try to agree with that so that we can start on a, a, a foundation of agreement before we spin off to other crazy stuff. Can I tell you something um, that's you. very sweet about my marriage? I hope you do. Uh, is that uh, whenever I ask Bobby for anything, if I say, oh, can I ask you a favor? He says yes, before right. he even hears what it is. And it right. just makes me feel like, oh my God, this guy gets me. <laughs> um, but it does, it, it like evokes something in you when somebody says yes to you. It makes you feel like you're in it together and they're on yeah. your side. You're being, I'm sorry to cut you off, that's exactly what I said not to do, but you, when you say yes to someone, you're empowering them. You, you show that you are listening to them. Yeah. You, you're, you're investing them in this connection. And a lot of times in the real, the real world, you cannot say yes to anything. If my boys want to you know, jump off the roof or whatever, you're not going to say yes to that. But you can start with, okay, you need some physical exercise. So yes, let's go do something. And then it's kind of a win-win. And then everybody feels like they are achieving something, or at least you're, you're connecting without just shutting somebody down. Yeah. If you've got the ability to say yes all the time, that's amazing, but not every few people do. So look at that as a technique of just how to connect with your partners um, and, and hopefully build to, to something you know, that's a win for everybody. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes complete sense. Yeah. So, and when you're talking about emotional intelligence, um, what does that really mean? So if, let's say I'm mad that somebody um, leaves their dishes in the sink. Yeah, right. Is it better for me to be like, I'm sick of it. I can't take it. <laughs> no, well, that's good catharsis for you, but yeah. it will probably not go anywhere towards getting those dishes out of the sink other than you, right? So, um, but if, I, if I'm, if I'm the, the target of your screaming, I'm going to read that you are upset, you are frustrated, you are angry, uh, and uh, you want help, you want support. I got to use my emotional intelligence to get that. And that's a pretty obvious one. But then there's a man-woman divide, too. So I go, yeah, honey, I, I should do more. I'm going to get them next time, but I'm going to go and do this first. And what happens yeah. is you just wind up doing them, and I know I can get away with that. Um, but, the <laughs> but the emotional intelligence aspect is, yeah, notice listening with intent, you'll see, okay, my partner is really upset. And partner means business partner, wife, yeah. whatever. My person that I'm talking to is upset. I, I need to recognize that. And what can I do to address it? You know, but if I just go, oh yeah, yeah, the, the dishes are a pain. We, we should do something about it and then move on. There's no action on that, you know, and you're not helping each other and your, your partner feels not heard and not valued and not listened to and not invested in. And that, guess what, breaks your connection, not permanently, but in right. that moment for sure. Yeah. I mean, listen, that, that could last for two days, that broken connection. It could last for uh, <laughs> an entire relationship. <laughs> I've got divorces to talk to you about. I've got all kinds of things to say. Hilarious. It could last forever. It is interesting. I mean, what you're saying, and I think it does apply to, to what people are going through here, because uh, we sort of don't listen to each other a lot of times, especially we're stuck in the house with the same people yeah. doing the same things over and over. Um, but I like the idea of, you know, an intent, like, listening to really hear what somebody says and then moving uh doing an action that sort of moves you in the direction of i heard you and i i'm gonna do something about it 
yeah, act on it. Yeah, and, and not, it's not a magic it. wand. It's, you know, it's not going to fix everything, but just making someone feel heard makes them feel valued. And, you know, we all need that sometimes. I think, like you said, particularly now, where everybody's on top of each other and, yeah. you know. Uh, not in a good way. Not in a good way, yeah. And just res respecting each other a little bit. And if I'm listening to you, that's the first step of respecting you. And again, you might not be able to say literally, yes, let's go shoot the BB gun at the neighbor, although I'd like to. Uh, but you can say, all right, you're frustrated. I get it. Let's go eat pie. Let's go play a video game. Let's go take uh -huh. a walk with the dog, whatever, you know. That's really good advice. Um, Brian. I'm filled with good advice, woman. You're full I'm of something. Filled with it. Filled with it. Um, Brian, I'm going to have to say goodbye, but... Uh, a lot of people really are loving you, and um, Susan Yeagley thinks you should do a TED Talk. I'm writing one right now, Susan Yeagley. You are? I'm writing one. This is it. I think I'm just going to chop just, this up and put it up in front of a TED. Oh, uh, we'll all be there. Great. We thought here first. And Dr. Ron from Bulgaria. Hi, Dr. Ron. <laughs> you seen? Oh, he, there's more people on the side. I just noticed the chat thing. Sorry. Is there really somebody from Bulgaria? I've been yeah, to Bulgaria. I think Dr. Ron is the Dr. Ron that I taught improv to in Copenhagen last year. Oh my gosh. Is that possible? Brian. Yes. Anything oh, is possible. And super I know you're wrapping it up, but uh, Kimberly, I don't know if you're, you're still there. You can she, see it. Yeah. On, according to Jim, which he mentioned, I guess is huge in Italy. Uh, <laughs> but that show was created by two groundlings, Tracy Newman and Jonathan Stark. Jim yes. was right. second city, Chicago. So it's all improv, all improv sketchy all around. Totally. Yeah. And I loved. I loved what you said. It made a lot of sense. Brad wasn't paying attention, but uh, <laughs> some like, about listening to your spouse, but I didn't hear. I didn't hear all of it. So we, we tune it out. Paisley, why don't you come over here and fix my ghostly lighting? I look like a crazy man. <laughs> um, Brian. Yeah. You, you can all of us have me. bad lighting right now, no, except for Cheryl. Somehow. Oh, mine is all natural. Um, <laughs> natural lighting, I'm saying. Um, Brian, you're welcome to stick around and watch this. Um, I'm gonna game. We're gonna see. We play a little game uh, called um, the shooting gallery. So Gabby is gonna come up and she's gonna tell us about uh, this game and how we play. And um, Gabby, I'm here. Um, okay, so we're doing a, a version of Shooting Gallery, which we've been playing for the last couple of times. So the audience, you guys should know what's happening by now. Um, Brad and Kimberly, uh, this is a game where we will pick someone randomly from the audience. We're going to spotlight them, and I'm going to read them two country music titles. One of them is real, and one of them is fake. Okay. And the audience member's job is to, to decide which one is the real one. And before they answer... Your job, Brad and Kimberly and Cheryl, is to decide whether or not you think this person is going to know that country music title. So if you're chosen, remember to put on your best poker face because you don't want to let them know whether or not you know it. And then wait to answer until Brad, Kimberly, and Cheryl weigh in on whether or not they think they're going to get it right. Is that clear? I think that was pretty yeah. clear. Well, yes. So uh, let's pick up. Uh, Brad and Kimberly, are you ready? you have any questions? No, I think I'm, I'm, I feel good. I don't know about these two. I feel great. Um, let's do it, Gail. Oh, also, if you don't want to play, you can turn off your video camera. If you're not a country music um, aficionado, feel free to turn off your video camera. You won't get picked. You won't get picked. Okay, so let's get our, ne our first, um, first volunteer up. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Okay, so you're playing shooting, uh, shooting gallery. Now, before you answer, okay. before you give your answer, make sure to wait for Brad, Kimberly, and Cheryl to weigh in on whether or not they think you're going to get this right. So, I'm going to give you two country music titles. You're going to tell me which one you think is the real country music title, and I'm going to answer. So, just wait to answer. Uh, your country music titles. First one, my boots. Make her horny. The second country music title, she thinks my tractor's sexy. Now wait. She'll get this right. She'll get this right. Brad yeah. and giving a thumbs up. Cheryl, what do you think? I think she won't get it right. Wow, okay, no faith. Chelsea, which one is the right music title? <laughs> she thinks my tractor is sexy. Ah! <laughs> I love that song. 
She'll get it right. All right. Zero to one. (laughs) Drink up, Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, This is almost gone. (laughs) Show her what you got. Yeah. Kim's Kim's Uh, it's a drinking game. Toe to toe now. I love that. I mean it's it's almost five o'clock in Nashville. That's right. Well, it's almost noon here. Um Gabby, who's next? Well, Gail, who's next? Gail. Oh, it's Lane. Lane. Hi, Lane. It's Laney. Lane? Hi, Laney. Hi, Laney. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, wait to answer until they weigh in, but the, your okay. two titles for you to think about. First one, Drop Kick Me Jesus. The second country music title, Bitch Slap Me, Mother Mary. No. <laughs> I think she'll get it right because of the choices you gave her, which are hilarious. But I think she'll get it right. I do too. Uh, But I will explain when she's done to the people baffled by country music at this moment. (laughs) Okay, Lainey, which one is the correct title? Drop Kick Me Jesus or Bitch Slap Me Mother Mary? Drop Kick Me Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Through the goalposts of life. From the dream analyst. Absolutely. (laughs) Okay, explain it. That's just a great Christian gospel song. Seriously? Drop kick me Jesus through the goalpost lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it was made tongue in cheek, but it's great. And it's a wonderful message. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, it, yeah. it combines everything we love in the South. Football, Jesus, country music. Yeah. You can't That's do better neat. than the football analogy with Jesus. That's all you need. Okay, Gail, who's next? Jennifer. Jennifer. Hi. Jennifer's wearing one of my my moonshine <laughs> shirt t-shirts. That's fantastic. She's Jennifer's. I can already tell you right now. She's going to get this right. She's the real deal. Okay. Fingers crossed. Jennifer, a lot of pressure for you to get this one right. I know, right? <laughs> Come on, Jennifer. I'm counting on you. Okay, your two titles. First one. My head hurts. My feet stink, and I don't love Jesus. Your second title, Jesus beat me in darts and started a bar fight. Wait, one of those is real? <laughs> right? I'll I don't know this one. Wait, Come on, Brad. Oh, okay. Brad bailed me out. <laughs> okay, wait, I mean, let's, that's the second one. Let's hear him again, Gabby. Okay. <laughs> Jesus beat me in darts and started a bar fight. Or, my head hurts, my feet stink, and I don't love Jesus. Wait to answer, Jennifer. Cheryl, do you think she's going to get this right? Well, the way she was laughing. I mean, I uh, personally, I thought she was going to get it right. I'm, I'm just going to go with yes. I'm going to go with yes. She's going to get it right. And Brad and Kimberly? I think she will, too. I don't know. I say no because I don't know the answer to that. I've never heard either of those Come titles. On, and I can't believe they even exist. Brad. All right. Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna go with the second one. Which was Jesus beat me in darts and started a bar fight? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I, I would have guessed that one too, Jennifer. I know, I, it was a guess. Now wait, now the, the first thing, that's not, a, that's not a title, right? It's just a lyric out of a song? Oh, it's a Jimmy Buffett song. Oh, I don't know that uh, one. Oh, so you knew it. Oh, I knew it, but I, know, I didn't know it. <laughs> oh, it hurts. My feet stink, and I don't love Jesus. I'm not a good Jennifer. Singer. If it's any consolation, you and I both didn't know that. All wow. right, wow. I'll take it. <laughs> wow. Sorry, guys. I appreciate I appreciate you, Jennifer, and I'm sorry for the for for you losing <laughs> this. <laughs> you failed me. <laughs> okay, Gabby, okay. do we have one more? One more before we move on to uh, Brad and Kimberly. Okay, Andy. Andy, what's hey. up? Hi. Just working from home. I what are you like listening it. to, Andy? What are you listening to there, Andy? You. Your headphones. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy, now remember to wait to answer until Cheryl, Brad, and Kimberly weigh in. Got it. The titles are Tootin', Scootin', Moody Booty, or Honky Tonk, Badonka Donk. Hmm. He'll get this right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think he'll get this right. Andy's getting this right. 
It's uh, Honky Tonk Badonka Dog by Trace Atkins. Ah! Very good, Andy. Oh. Nice job. With the extra mile with the, yes, the singer. Okay. Um, do you, was anybody keeping track of who actually won? Everybody won. Oh, everybody. We're all winners. Everyone's winners and no one's losers. Okay. So now we're moving on to Brad and Kim. Uh, speaking of Honky Tonk Badonka Donk. Uh, your, yours is a little bit more complicated. Um, now, before you answer, we're going to have the audience weigh in on whether or not they think you're going to get this right. So your challenge is I'm going to read you two lyrics from Honky Tonk Badonka Donk, and you're going to fill in the next two lyrics. Oh, gosh. We feel She's not gonna I'm not going to get that. I'll but, try to get it. But before you do, give the audience a chance to vote if they think that you're going to get this right or not. <laughs> So don't answer right away. Okay, well, right now people have faith in you, but okay, so the lyrics I'm gonna give you are honky tonk, badonka donk, keep in perfect rhythm makes you want to sing along. What are the next two lyrics? And you can phone a friend who is Cheryl if you need to. Uh, you, are you ready for me to answer or are you waiting on them to vote? We're ready for you to answer and people say 10 to four, people think you guys will get it. Uh, got it going on like Donkey Kong. So Is there another one? Yeah. Are you want another one? Yes. All right, now I gotta I gotta go back in the runway here. I don't know, Donkey Kong. Green Bird, Green Bird, Long got it going on like Donkey Kong. Uh, some or other slap slap my grandma. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Slap your Slap grandma. Slap your grandma. Yeah. So that's Honestly, close. I got it. I just shut your mouth. I didn't get but We're going to give it to them. I think it's we're early in the good. day. Okay. It's early in the They're day. If I was, a, you know, it's one of those things where if you ask me the lyrics to one of my songs right now, I'd be like, wait, let me think about it. But if I'm in the middle of singing it on stage, I'll remember it. You'll remember. Um, well, speaking of your songs, the challenge for Cheryl. Oh, geez. Oh, oh good. good I hope it's the Tick song. I want to check oh, you for Ticks. No. no, it's not the Tick song. <laughs> um, Brad's latest song, No Eye and Beer. Uh, Which Cheryl should know about. Uh, <laughs> you're drinking one now, you're an expert. Cheryl, I'm going to sing, I'm not going to sing you. I wouldn't do that, you guys. Uh, Cheryl, I'm going to tell you the two lyrics and you're going to tell me the next two, okay? Good luck. I'm already saying she's not going to get it. But just by the way, just so you know, last week I did not identify Dr. Spock correctly. <laughs> uh, you mean Mr. Mr. Spock? <laughs> <laughs> he's not a doctor? Oh, he's just Mr.? Where, well, it depends on which one you're talking. Never mind. One from, okay, here we go. <laughs> hmm. Now, okay, wait, before we begin, we have to decide if the, the audience thinks you're going to get it right. And honestly, audience... I wouldn't blame you guys if you don't have a lot of faith in her. <laughs> Do we get to vote? Oh my God, absolutely not. <laughs> we cannot vote, it says no. I think I absolutely say. not, it would be my vote. <laughs> don't give it away. No. Don't. I, don't want to, I don't want to influence the vote. No, that's, um, you guys probably chose. No, it. I can't what believe you guys. I'm not believing no. you. Um, rude. Okay. Simply the, the first chorus, uh, cause we're all in this together. To me, it's all so clear. Is it, is it something like, <laughs> like Girl. drinking ought to be a team effort cause there ain't no I in beer. That's exactly it. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to, to hear you sing that. And <laughs> do you want me on your singing team? I'll yeah. let you know. Oh. I'll let you know. Yes, and. Yes. <laughs> oh, Ryan, it's it worked. Yes, <laughs> and. Uh, in those cases where Brad should start with yes, but don't expect necessarily to pay that off. <laughs> right. No, that, I think that's ex that's great advice. There you go. But it made me feel good in the moment. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, you guys, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Uh, Brian Palermo, thank you so much for joining us. You can, if you want to um, look at Brian, Brian, what's your uh, website? I put in the chat, it's Palermo Improv Training. So if you can spell my name and it's in the chat thing, you can find it. Okay. And then Brad, tell us about what's going on tonight. So uh, there's actually two things going on tonight that I didn't realize were uh, almost the same time, but the, I've got a thing with Bud Light Seltzer, which you should try that next. I know, I will. 
I'll go again. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> the uh, the uh, it's a it's a live concert on my Facebook Live, YouTube Live, uh, Bud Light's Facebook Live. L myself and Lady Annabelle are playing. Uh, we've set up our our tour uh, in a rehearsal space in Nashville. We're playing the full thing, taking requests on Zoom like this and everything else, and it's really going to be fun. It's gonna be um, awesome. That's tonight at nine Eastern, so six o'clock for you guys. And then also tonight is the Hollywood uh, thing we did, that we did for David. The oh yeah, do you have picture. information on that? I don't, but there's a thing airing also tonight somewhere that's the motion picture. <laughs> so go watch that. Yes, it's well, uh, it's for the motion specific, for the actors' fund. Wait, can you give us more information? It's a a thing that David did. David, David Wilde, Wilde our, Motion our Picture Home. It's motion a fundraiser for uh, Motion Picture Home. But that you can check out. Like I would imagine that'll exist. All also like when I'm done. I don't know. I don't know exactly what time that starts. But just Google it. Google go it, watch it, people. You already yeah. Have your you got nothing picture. to do tonight. Yeah. There you okay, go. We're gonna watch Brad tonight. We're I I encourage everybody to check out the store. It's really I mean it's an amazing uh, project that you guys are doing. That's thank you. I mean, so helpful, and I, I, I'm sure you're so overwhelmed right now because everybody's in need. So now's a good time to help people if you um, if you can. Right. Um, thank you guys for being we, with us. We thank you, love Cheryl. you. Thank you so much for having us. You're the best. We'll see you soon. I love you. Are you ready to talk it up? Are Bye. you ready for the big chit chat? We're gonna be shooting the wood, Michelle. Thank you, David.